Welcome to Season 5 of the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom, where we talk with enterprise and technology platform leaders about the people, processes, and platforms that make marketing and customer experience successful, scalable, and sustainable. This is what creates an Agile brand. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom, advisor and consultant for Fortune 1000 marketing and CX leaders and teams as principal and chief strategist at GK5A and best-selling author, keynote speaker, entrepreneur, and Agile certified coach. The Agile Brand Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to teksystems.com. To sign up for the Agile Brand newsletter and get the latest insights and articles on marketing technology and CX, or to purchase a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, go to gregkillstrom.com. You can also find all my books on Amazon and other retailers. And now on to the show. I am here at Pega World Inspire in Las Vegas today and looking forward to this topic as well as uh, to talk with my guests today. Today we're going to talk about the autonomous enterprise and how it benefits the customer experience, plus the ethics of generative AI. To help me discuss this topic, I'm joined by Tara DeZeo, Product Marketing Director, Ad Tech and MarTech at Pega. Tara, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Greg. Yeah, looking forward to talking yeah. about this with you. Um, so why don't we get started by um, you giving a little background on yourself and, and your role at Pega. Sure, absolutely. So I have a long history as a marketer with ad tech organizations and uh, Fortune 500 companies as well in ad tech and martech. And I'm here at Pega talking through some of the benefits that AI has for ad tech and martech practitioners. So excited to be here. Yeah, yeah, it's been, been a great show so far. So, um, and you know, for those a little less familiar with the the Pega platform, um, can you explain a little bit about what it does from a, a marketer and a customer experience practitioner perspective? Um, although it does many things. <laughs> yeah, a- absolutely. So, our customer decision hub acts as a central brain inside a Martech stack. So, essentially, taking all of the data signals that customer or prospect is emitting as they sort of travel through a brand's channels, learning from that, and then helping brands engage in the moment based on those data signals. Wonderful. So let's uh, let's get started. We'll talk about where we are right now. We're at Pega World Inspire, which is Pega's annual conference here at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. So there's certainly been a lot of inspiring talks already. Uh, we're in day two and a half-ish here. And, you know, I wanted to get your take on a, on a few things. So being at the point we are, um, still plenty more to, to come in at the show, but you know, what, what are maybe one or two highlights of the show so far for you? Yeah, you know, there's been a couple. The first highlight for me is Dr. Robert Walker's speech about generative AI. He is just such a, an amazing, engaging speaker and irreverent and funny. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are afraid of AI. And I think he sort of breaks down like what to be afraid of, but what not to be afraid of and that. That was a, a great spot. I would say the other thing is just hearing from our clients. You know, they they have shared experiences and shared challenges and shared opportunities. And then having those clients get to engage with clients off stage who are asking questions and really generating some excitement around what they're doing inside their own org. So hearing from our clients has been awesome. Yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah, and so this is the first one post pandemic that's been in person, right? So, yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, we work with these people virtually every day and we never get to meet them. So this is just a great opportunity. Yeah. Nice. So um, we're going to talk about a few things. I'll get back to Rob Walker's keynote. I uh, wanted to talk about that. We'll talk about generative AI as well, because I know you've written some some things in that area. Specifically to the conference, though, Pega made a few announcements across the entire suite. Again, it does much more than just marketing and, and CX-related things. But for the, the audience here, mostly focused in those areas, what are maybe one or two of the key announcements in, you know, in the customer decision hub and that kind of area? Yeah, you know, I'm going to focus on the self-creating treatments. Basically, you know, I come from a marketing background and I want to get in our time machine and travel back six years where we might be running a campaign or a marketing program and 
you put all of your ad units out on your different channels, you send your emails out, and then you realize, oh my gosh, there's a typo in our ad unit. I've been there once or maybe <laughs> twice. <laughs> it's, you know, I think in the grand scheme of the world's problems, it's benign, but as a marketer, it's a terrible feeling. So in the past, you might have to pull that ad unit down, stop the entire campaign, redo the creative by hand, send it up the approval chain, and maybe you're looking at two weeks of postponement of that campaign. Our Gen AI capabilities in CDH allow you to make changes to those treatments on the fly. So you stop, make the changes, and you know reactivate the treatment in real time. And that is just what we've all been waiting for. Right, right. Yeah, yeah it's the, yeah, that's such a huge saving. And then to that point, you know, in, in the olden times of marketing, you might wait a couple of weeks to be able to triangulate all the results from your campaign and see if, you know, the engagements are working and what's working the best. Here you can actually know right away. Did that engage a customer? Am I hitting all the right populations? Is there an underserved population that I need to be talking to that I'm not talking to? So I think that's a great functionality on the attribution side of, hey, is this working? Yeah, yeah, that's great. And so you mentioned um, Dr. Rob Walker shared some some insights about AI. And so, you know, just a few here. While there are certainly areas for caution, you know, some of the more, I'll call it optimistic or, or positive stats here, two thirds of, of respondents to, to the research agree that AI has the potential to improve the customer service of businesses they interact with. And these are consumers responding as well as more than half saying co uh, companies using AI will be more likely to offer better benefits to customers compared to businesses that do not, uh, those, those using AI. So my question for you here is, there's lots of companies that are kind of they're they're leading they're you know they're they're experimenting and and they're they're a bit further down the path but for those that are let's say lagging behind maybe not necessarily haven't started yet even but those that are a little bit behind what should they do to try to get ahead cuz they're gonna get left behind in all of this if they don't start acting right absolutely uh you know i know a digital transformation can be kind of scary but i think it's important to keep in mind that it could be a phased approach and what I would say to get ready for it is to make sure that your data is in order because your AI systems only perform as well as your, how fresh your data is. So, you know, people have data all over their organizations and AI helps unify that data. But if it's not, you know, up to date, clean, real time, um, correct information, that's going to cause problems. So get your data house in order first and then start going down the path of transformation. Yeah, yeah, which that, you know, even for smaller orgs, that's, that can be uh, quite, a, quite a daunting thing, but totally, totally agree. Absolutely. I just was talking to someone about um, a survey of marketers talking about first-party data, and 61% of marketers in this survey said that they are having challenges activating their first-party data still. Yeah. So yeah. this is, you know... That's a signal that we need to really focus on the foundation. Yeah. Well, and w with first party data, I mean, that's that Google, I know Google keeps kind of pushing their yeah. deadline. I think as of now, it's like end of next year. Yeah. Still, it's, uh, I've read other stats saying not enough marketers have even really started down that path or really know how to solve it too. Yeah. That's, you know, for certain industries, it's going to be a lot harder that are challenged with having less first party data. And so, you know, now is the time to really lean into some of those strategies and figure out how to procure some, some quality insights about your customers. Yeah, absolutely. Next topic I wanted to talk about is generative AI. Certainly, I almost feel like it's a requirement to talk about it in, in every show <laughs> these days. So, but you know, I think Pega has a what I think is a unique approach and, and a, a really interesting approach to it. So some big announcements were made certainly in, in this area, both at this conference as well as a little prior to this conference um, around Pega's Gen AI features. Can you talk a little bit about some of those and, you know, how does this, how does this help and enhance things from the customer perspective? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the goal, right, is that AI is not meant to replace humans. It's it's there to help scale 
in a world where we're challenged by shareholders wanting more with less resources, you know, we're less able to meet hiring goals and things like that. So I think when you have AI that's self-learning across all of your channels, across all of your departments, you can essentially create better outcomes, right? So for example, process AI and workflow automation, if you're having bottlenecks and things like that, and we're enabling you to speak to your tech and say, hey, where's the bottleneck? Can you help me unjam this? That's going to be huge. You know, it's the goal is to keep business as usual going and scale. And I think that's, you know, the core of an autonomous enterprise when, and I, I don't want to make it sound like it's all AI because it's a human and AI partnership. But, yeah. you know, I think the goal with the autonomous enterprise is to utilize these features and make business less friction filled. Yeah. I think that cascades down from, you know, your client experience also to your employees experience. And that's going to all be enabled by these self-learning capabilities and generative AI features. Before we continue, let's take a quick break. If you're like many marketing leaders today, you're inundated with a need to improve the customer experience across an increasing number of channels and touch points, all while ensuring your team is performing well, innovating, and continuously improving. So how do you find the time to determine what's next for you, your team, your brand, and your customers? My company, GK5A, can help. Whether it is advisory services, evaluation of marketing technology platforms and solutions, or digital agencies and implementation partners, or assistance with creating strategic roadmaps and prioritization of efforts, we've done it all and served as an ally to Fortune 1000 brands and in industries like financial services, healthcare, consumer electronics, professional services, and more. You can learn more about these services and contact us at www.gk5a. That's www.gk5a.com. Now let's get back to the show. Pegas CTO Don Sherman talked a little bit about this too, the you know, the the autonomous enterprise that you just mentioned. So kind of understanding a little bit and and thanks for explaining that. Um, how does this so it it's helping the organization become more efficient? It is helping ideally it's it's then driving better experiences for customers. How about the the employees there that, you know, they're now they're doing a certain set of tasks and they're, you know, a, maybe a lot of repetitive tasks or a lot of, a lot of other things like that. You know, how does, how does an autonomous enterprise help that employee experience for those that are, you know, in charge of serving the customer? Yeah. You know, so the idea is to eliminate humans from having to perform those mundane tasks, but I, you know, I want to call out a specific feature that we have called next best action advisor which essentially helps guide your frontline employees that are talking with customers, maybe in a, at the contact center or wherever you're sort of interacting for support, gives you AI-backed recommendations about that customer so that you're interacting with them based on their data history. And what that does is it makes the experience for the customer easier and it makes the experience for the employee easier because they're not really having to, you know, do a lot of research or go deep into their scripts or, you know, do all of the legwork to get the answer that they need. The answer is populating into their console right in front of them. So it's, it's an AI assisted human interaction. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. So it kind of takes some of the guesswork out and yet has the ability for a human to go in and approve or, or not. Right. Is that Absolutely. And, you know, just to give you an example, I had to talk to my insurance company the other day and every time that I got transferred, they asked me the same four questions. Yeah, I've been there. I've been there. And by the end of the call, my face was red. I was sweating. I was angry and it sort of ruined the rest of my day. Yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't that doesn't need to be the case. Right. You know, if they had my entire history, you know, being populated through their console backed by A.I., that interaction would have been way smoother, shorter, and more enjoyable. And, uh, you know, to go back to the point about the employee experience too, 
I can't imagine the, the employees that you talk to at that insurance company loved asking you for the fourth time. No. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what the same information because they, you know, they needed it. And yet there's obvious frustration on the part of the customer in, in those scenarios. Absolutely. You know, you have to, you know, the customer then has to take a pause and realize that that's the messenger, not the right, person, right. you know, in charge of the policy. But still, it's frustrating nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. So um, last topic I wanted to talk about today is, and, and you've done some writing about this as well, is, you know, talk about generative AI, but there's there's a lot of ethical implications of this. And, uh, you know, I think platforms that offer transparency and, and things into AI certainly go a long way towards that. But you wrote a piece for MarTech series called um, How Marketers Can Master the Ethical Use of Generative AI. And there's there's a few points in there that you underscore as non-negotiables. And I, I like I like how you how you put it in there. Non-negotiables when ethically integrating generative AI into a marketing strategy. So I want to touch on on each of these. So first is centering the customer. And I love that you wrote just because you can use AI a certain way doesn't mean you should. I've often <laughs> said just because you can doesn't mean you should in other areas. I think yes. it's something to kind of live by um in some ways. But yeah, can you talk about what you meant by this uh, and why, you know, despite all the hype about AI, you know, marketers need to carefully consider their generative AI usage? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think we're in the right place for my example because I talk about an example that I read about in Kathy O'Neill's book, Weapons of Math Destruction. I don't know if you've read it, yeah, but yeah it's, yeah, it's a great book. She talks about utilizing third-party data to target maybe ad addicted gamblers for cheap flights or trips to Las Vegas. And it's one thing to want to drive better business outcomes and, and, and market to the right audiences. But essentially in that scenario that she describes, you're taking advantage of a, you know, someone who's in a bad situation to maybe get that little in incremental revenue. I think at PEGA, what we, we are advocating for is that you're building a long-term relationship with your client. So everything that you do with them should serve that long-term relationship and driving them further and further into a bad situation is not something that is good for the, your relationship with them. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great point there. Second one um, is to talk about bias. And, you know, that's such a critical area that, you know, anybody using AI needs to understand this and, and transparency, as I mentioned earlier, is a critical component of Understanding bias, um, ideally not introducing it, but you know, understanding when it is has been introduced. Can you briefly explain the the challenge here for those that may be a little familiar with some of these concepts? And you know, how should a marketer or a CX professional approach this? Yeah, you know, I would say that a lot of the bias comes from data, and I mean, I think if you look at Chat GPT, the data only goes up to. 2021. Yeah. So anything that's happened post 2021 is not going to be included in that data set. And when you have data that's outdated, you're making decisions on things that no longer may be true, right? So we're seeing a lot of interactions between customer engagement practitioners and clients that are a big deal, right? So like you might apply for a mortgage or a credit card and you know, we've seen gender bias and things like that inside inside data sets. So you really want to make sure that you have oversight into these areas to make sure that your data does not have biases in it. Because an algorithm is really just a set of instructions. So you can tell it to, you know, deliver me a pizza or you can tell it to, you know, do something horrendous for humanity. Right, <laughs> but it's right. really about the intent and the data behind it. So, yeah. Yeah. And even, you know, even if it's not for nefarious purposes, it's still this, the, I mean, machine learning is an amazing thing yet it can get steered in the wrong direction. Oh yeah. And I would say most of the time it's not a nefarious, you know, intent. And what ends up happening is you get incorrect data in there and because it's self learning and it's learned on that data, it's adaptive it's just going to reinforce that bias over and over and over again. So the more incorrect that it is, the more incorrect that it becomes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, the last point in the, the article, um, you talked about the importance of a human mediator um, when utilizing generative AI. What, what do you mean by that? And Yeah, you know, 
it's not just the technical staff and the back office and the data scientists that it is incumbent upon to be a steward of ethical behavior. There are many roles across the company that contribute to how these tools are used. And I think it's incumbent on all of us to work together to create the world that we want to see around AI, right? So it's it's as simple as partnering up with your, we call them frenemies, you know, your competitors and, and putting together frameworks that say, hey, this is how we're going to treat AI. These are the things that we're going to abide by. You know, there's laws and things like that, but the laws are rarely caught up to the technology and the potential that the technology has. So I would say, you know, get your entire workforce behind your ethics strategies around AI so that everyone is on the lookout for something that doesn't seem right. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, Tara, thanks so much for joining the show. Uh, one last question before we wrap up here. You know, we talked about a lot today, but to go back to generative AI, you know, those that are oh, not quite far, as far down the path as they might want to be, you know, what, what's a way to get started in thinking about, you know, usage of generative AI for marketing and CX? Yeah, I would say research the use cases figure out, you know, what the outcome, what the goal would be for it, and then integrate it that way. Because, you know, the worst case scenario would be just baking it into your your stack just because it's the hot, buzzy thing. Um, and if you don't have desired outcomes and use cases that would be improved, figure that out first. So really, really look into the strategy behind why and then start there. Great, great. Great advice. Well, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. This was awesome. Great to meet you. Yeah, great to meet you. Again, I'd like to thank Tara DeZeo, Product Marketing Director, AdTech and MarTech for joining the show. You can learn more about Tara and Pega by following the links in the show notes. And stay tuned for Pega World Inspire 2024 coming next June at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Thanks again for listening to the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom podcast, brought to you by Tech Systems. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can access more episodes of the show at www.gregkilstrom.com. That's G-R-E-G-K-I-H-L-S-T-R-O-M.com. To get a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, visit my website or you can find it on Amazon or other retailers. The Agile brand is produced by Missing Link, a Latina-owned, strategy-driven, creatively-fueled production co-op. From ideation to creation, they craft human connections through intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Until next time, stay agile.